Okay, so I want to do a video on one of the consoles that I just picked up. I have a terribly bad habit of just buying things that I don't need or have no use for and, you know, whatever. And one of those things that I like to pick up are Game Boys. Now, I saw this deal. Uh, this is from Yahoo Auctions. I was purchasing it through a proxy called Buy because I'm in the United States and Yahoo Auctions doesn't really serve the United States. Uh, anyhow, it was a Game Boy Advance SP, several games, and I ended up paying, I don't know how well you can see that, but that is $13.77. Uh, shipping was not free, and it was actually a little bit more than I paid for the console, but anyway, I got the console here. I've already gone over this thing, I haven't taken it apart yet, but I have kind of cleaned it off because it was kind of gross, uh, and I did already pop a new battery into it. Um, one thing I like about importing from Japan is when you get stuff, it's usually in like absolutely perfect condition. Like, look at this game, man. That this looks this looks brand new. It even came in one of these little clear cases, and you know it it works and it looks great. Anyway, that wasn't the case with this Game Boy. The auction said, well, I don't know how much it said because I don't read Japanese. Uh, but anyway, it didn't indicate that this thing was broken, and it turns out that it has several issues. I, Like I said, I already replaced the battery in it. This is what came in the console. You can't really tell on camera, but it is bulging up a little bit. So let me grab my uh, caliper here. So the battery is supposed to be... I don't know, about 5.3 millimeters thick. But if you measure from the middle, you can see it's quite a bit thicker than that. Uh, this was causing the uh, battery cover on the console to bulge out. And you know, it's just really not safe. This is how lithium ion batteries fail. They start bulging out. And you know, eventually this thing could fail safe and just stop working entirely or it can explode. I'm leaning towards the former but just in case it's the latter, I'm taking it out and replacing it now. Now, I've already charged up this battery. Um, of course, this came out of another console. Let me just pop this off. Oops. Yeah, so this is an, an OEM Game Boy Advance SP battery. It's not aftermarket or anything, uh, but this is, of course, out of a US model. Focus. There we go. Yeah, you can see US on there, whereas the console itself is a Japanese model. Uh, nice thing about Nintendo consoles is up to the DSi, so all Game Boy and all Nintendo DS and DS Lite consoles are completely region free. The only difference between them is the label. Uh, so this thing will play American games just fine. Uh, it'll play Japanese games, it'll play European games, it'll play whatever you want to put in it. And with this new battery, it seems to be playing just fine. I can't get a good angle on the screen. I guess you'll just have to take my word that it's working for other. Oh, you can kind of see that. Anyway, uh, this thing has several problems that I want to try and go over. Uh, first is something... Let me turn off this light see a little bit better yeah there we go so you can of course I can't really get it to do it now but I'm not turning it off I'm just putting my finger on the power switch you can see that it just reset uh, it's kind of flickering a little bit uh, of course audio is working now but it's somewhat intermittent on this unit so I'm gonna take it apart and see if I can fix it um, like I said, I did already clean it, but I haven't actually been inside this thing. Can't even get the battery cover off now. Anyway, while I'm working on this, uh, I did actually want an original Platinum AGS-001 model. Uh, I This was well, not this one in particular, obviously, but um, 
the Platinum AGS-001 was my first Game Boy Advance. Uh, it was basically my second Game Boy ever, so there's a lot of nostalgia going with it. Functionally, a lot of people like these uh, 101 models. The screen looks a little bit better on them in most lighting situations. But, you know, I like my 001s. Anyway, get back to disassembling this. There are six screws that hold the bottom panel onto an AGS console. All of them are tri-point. Four of them are the same longer screws. They should be black, but it looks like these ones are kind of dirty. Or at least I remember them being black. I guess this one could be a little bit different. And then there's the two shorter ones, one in the battery compartment and one in the cartridge slot. Try not to lose them. I'm just going to flip that up, try and pop those in there. And oh, I guess these screws are not black. Maybe I'm misremembering. Anyway, with those six out, bottom should just lift off. Be careful of the shoulder buttons. They usually don't move, but sometimes they do fall out and these little springs in there will fuck off on you if you're not paying attention. All right, so here is the console itself, or the motherboard at least. I'm just giving it a quick once over. I don't see any major issues with it. Um, so like I I'm looking for any corrosion for like water damage or something. This one doesn't have a water indicator. Usually Game Boy Advance SPs have a little water indicator right here that'll turn red if it gets wet. I don't think someone's been in this. These screws don't look like, uh, this thing doesn't look like it's been taken apart. I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't know. I think I'm the first one in here. Once you get the bottom panel off, there are three more Phillips screws instead of a tri-point. Two right below the cartridge reader, and then one right above it. Once you've got those out, you can open the screen to give you a little bit more slack, lift the motherboard up, and then you kind of want to flip it around and undo the bail that holds the ribbon on. And that'll give you a little bit more uh, working capacity with it. So on the inside, I mean, surprisingly, these buttons are super clean. Like, I'm not even going to bother cleaning this. Uh, I'm just going to set this aside for now and focus on the power switch issue. Of course, all these membranes stuck to the board. I'm just gonna peel those off, put those to the side, probably knock them off my desk and scatter them everywhere. Okay. So yeah, you can see this thing's a little bit dusty near the shoulder buttons. This is why the shoulder buttons on these things tend to fail. They just get uh, dust and dirt and accumulate, you know, shit accumulates in there and it stops working. Uh, there is a way you can kind of like cut off these plastic rivets and then take the button apart and clean it out and you know that that does work pretty well but it's it's a pain in the ass. Uh, anyway, I don't see any corrosion on the speaker contacts nor on the uh, speaker itself so I don't know why I'm getting intermittent audio but the thing is when I press down on the center of the console like when I press down right here-ish, the speaker starts working again. So I'm guessing to fix that, all I need to do is just bend these up a little. And that's probably fixed. So we'll move on to the power switch issue now. I'm just going to flip on my soldering iron because the way to fix the power switch is we need to go in here and desolder this metal shielding here so we can pull out the slider and clean the actual metal contacts. So what I like to do is I like to just take a utility knife, 
just because that's pretty thin. You can stick that in there easy enough. I'm sticking this between the metal shielding and the rest of the unit itself. I'm just going to lock this. There we go. Now I'm going to take my soldering iron that is hopefully already heated up. Let's test it and make sure. Yeah. Then I'm going to try and angle it to get in there without burning myself or melting anything. And then just kind of work that off. Okay. Once you've got one side, give it a few seconds to cool, flip it around. And then you can use your finger to do the other side. Or to, I guess, lift it so you can pull it off. All right, once that's off, I'm going to bend it back to shape a little so it's easier on myself when I solder it back on. And then you can pull that off. And lo and behold, that is the issue. So it, I guess it's pretty hard to see on here. Uh, I have some macro photos of another unit that I've taken, but this one looks the same. You can... I don't know if you can really see that down there, but you can see those should be copper contacts. And they look kind of, I don't know, kind of gross, I guess. Um, so how I like to clean this is I like to take, uh, let's see, like those, those cheap cardboard tube cotton swabs, um, rubbing alcohol. Sometimes that's not enough, so I'll use a little bit of baking soda and water. And I am not prepared as I thought I was, so excuse me just a moment. I'm going to go grab some cotton swabs. Okay, I'm back. Got some cotton swabs. This is what I was talking about. Q-Tip is the name brand, but these are just cotton swabs. Um, I like to just cut the end off there. And I'm just going to pour some of this isopropyl alcohol out on my desk here. Just a little bit. And just soak it up with the end of the, the swab. And then stick that in there and rub the contacts. And I apologize for this noise. I don't know how well you can see that, but that looks a lot better, doesn't it? And you can see on the uh, cotton swab all that all that junk. And now I want to make sure I get the switch too. I'm going to put some isopropyl alcohol on this side of the cotton swab. And easiest way, I'm going to try not to ruin this paper. And I'm going to hold it down with my knife and just wipe off the, I guess it's called a wiper, uh, but this little metal spring, it's shaped kind of like a V. This is what slides across the contacts and closes the circuit, but it's just kind of press fit into the plastic here. So if you're a little too aggressive with it, it will come out. But as long as I'm holding it down, I can be as aggressive as I want. All right, that looks good enough. You don't have to get all up in the middle there. I'm just gonna wipe this down one more time. Make sure it's nice and clean. And since I have a wet or cotton swab, I'm just going to try and get some of this dust and grime off here. Okay, enough of that. So let's put this back together. Turn my soldering iron back on. So ideally you want to give this plenty of time to dry out, but I don't plan on turning this on as soon as I put it back together, so I think we're going to be good. Um, now some of these 
uh, metal shields are directional, like you have to have one side facing out, one side in, whatever. This one's not. Which is good, because I wasn't paying attention at all when I removed it. Anyway, you can just kind of slip that back on. And actually, before I do that, because it's not sitting flush, I'm going to melt that pad down a little. Yeah, you can hear the, the uh, popping. That's the evaporation of the uh, excess alcohol that I should let dry before I turn this on. You have to be real careful if you're using your finger to do that like I am because that son of a bitch gets hot in a hurry. There is not a lot of thermal mass to this thing. That should be good. I'm gonna put the soldering iron away for now. And we're gonna give this some time, let it dry out. I'm probably gonna put it back together off camera while I clean out the inside a little. But it's, I lied. I said I wasn't gonna clean it, but I'm gonna clean it anyway because it's open and I have to wait for this to dry anyway. So I will be back momentarily. And I guess what I, I could go over what I'm actually doing. I'm cleaning these uh, cracks and crevices here because you can't really clean these while the console is assembled. These buttons and stuff, they feel fine, they look fine. I'm not going to focus too hard on it. Um, but I do want to get in these cracks here. I mean, this thing is pretty clean aside from in the ports and holes there. But... These crevices could use a little bit of attention, so that's what I'm going to approach. And I'm just going to use these cotton swabs here with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and just rub it in, and that should be good. Okay, so I'm done cleaning this. I guess I'm going to start putting it back together. Another thing I want to address eventually on this thing is, again, I don't know how well you can see it. It's really difficult to see unless it's like right up in your face. Uh, let me try without the light. Yeah, that's not any better at all. Okay. Anyway, it looks like there's a little bit of dust behind this front screen lens and on top of the actual screen itself. I need to take this apart to clean it, and it's much easier to take the top apart when it's not connected to the motherboard just because you can actually pull the screen out there instead of having to manipulate it by the ribbon cable. But to be honest, that's a lot of effort that I just don't feel like getting into right now. So that's going to have to wait until another day. I'm just cleaning off the cable because I had my fingers all over it. And I'm going to start putting this thing back together. Assembly is the exact opposite of reverse with one slight exception. I like to put the ribbon cable in first and then put in all the buttons and stuff. So I've got the ribbon cable. Make sure you got your start, your select. Put the membrane. B, excuse me, B goes there. A goes there. Silicone membrane and D-pad. This membrane. Oh, and uh oh. I seem to have misplaced the brightness button. Excuse me for a moment while I track that down. Why didn't you guys tell me it was right next to my screwdriver? Anyway. Pop your brightness button in membrane and before you put this down I did already bend these up uh, should be good enough where they are make sure you didn't lose your uh, LED diffuser there and then you can go ahead and drop this down 
And then we want to put those three little Phillips screws back in. I don't know how people do this without a magnet, magnetic screwdriver. Next up, I'm going to make sure that is flipped to off, and I'm going to drop the power switch with the, uh, I don't know, the little bump facing up. That goes in there. And then on the bottom half of the shell, we want to make sure that two things, well, yeah, I guess three. You want to make sure your shoulder buttons are still in place with the little springs. I suppose you don't really need the springs, but it it helps. And then you definitely want to make sure this nut is still in there. This nut is what the battery cover screws into. And on the OEM shells, not so much, but on the aftermarket shells, this thing likes to fall out on you. So you got to be careful and you got to kind of like keep this upright and then flip that around like that. But whatever. Um, oh, you know, what? I'm actually going to put the power switch in the bottom. And so the click is actually from the shell, not from the switch itself. But anyway, make sure that's set to off. That's set to off, because this is how you would assemble an aftermarket shell. Drop that in, and then you can flip it over and pop your screws in. Uh, like I said, six screws, tri-point, the uh, four long ones go in the corners. And sorry, all you see is finger. Uh, okay, two, X three. Soldering iron on. Okay. Got the four long ones. Now for the two short ones. And it doesn't matter what order you do these in. Nor does it really matter that you have all six as long as your console is stock. The shell fits together more than good enough. In fact, three screws is probably enough if you really wanted to go that route. Okay, uh, something like one, two, three, or one, two, three, but whatever. That's done. Pop my battery back in. Battery cover on. And put my game in. Kill the light, and let's see how much better it works. I'm going to turn the volume up, turn it on. So the volume's working, but again, that was intermittent, so I guess it's kind of hard to tell. And now, I can tap the power switch all I want with no flickering and no resetting. Ta-da!